I can't help but get excited at this time of year as things start to warm up because the buds come out, the shoots pop up and the whole garden just bounces back to life. So now is a really great time to get out in the garden and get some little jobs done so that your plants get the best start to the season. Compost is like black gold for the garden. It nourishes and enriches the soil. So here is a really simple DIY way to make a mini compost bin at home in even the smallest space. And it all starts with a simple bucket with a lid. First up, we need to drill some holes in the side of the bucket. So not only will these holes help to provide aeration, but they'll also allow the worms helping to break down all that yummy organic matter. Next up, we're going to remove the bottom of the container. So to do that and make it a little bit easier, I'm going to drill some holes so that I can get the utility saw in there. Now to find a spot in the garden for our mini compost bin. Now, without getting too technical about it, creating good compost is all about getting that right balance between your browns, which is things like a little bit of straw, maybe some dried leaves, a little bit of newspaper, and your greens. Now, you don't want to throw any meat or any dairy in there, and remember, the smaller the pieces, the quicker they break down. My top tip for the perfect compost is to get in there and aerate the mix, just with a little fork, about once or twice a week, to speed up decomposition. Moisture is also really important. You don't want the mix to be too wet or too dry. About the consistency of a ringed out sponge is just perfect. And remember, because we cut the bottom off that bin, the earthworms and microorganisms can start moving in and doing their job. When your compost is ready to use, it should look and smell like soil and be full of lots of goodness to nourish your plants. And best of all, you can quite simply lift it out, leaving that gorgeous compost behind and use our mini compost to nourish another part of the garden. Hands up if your lawn's looking a little bit patchy or a bit weary from the winter. So I've just got a nice sturdy fork and I'm rocking it back and forth to really open up that soil profile. And that means a stronger, tougher root system and a more vigorous, resilient grass. Every lawn loves a good feed, so give it a good dose of Scott's Lawn Builder All-Purpose Slow-Release Lawn Fertiliser. Now, it feeds your lawn over a period of three months. The result is stronger roots and a thick, lush lawn that smothers out any unwanted weeds. One of the easiest ways to apply the fertiliser is with a handheld spreader like this. Just make sure that you water it in after you apply it. Bald or patchy spots can be an invitation for unwanted weeds to invade. So this product is called Patch Magic and it's a mix of five different lawn seed varieties so it blends beautifully with most lawns. The seed is mixed with a kind of expanding mulch that's made out of coir, which holds up to five times its own weight in water. So basically it provides a moist environment for those seeds to germinate in and provides everything they need to develop strong roots and healthy growth so you can fill these patches in in no time. Now that the bigger jobs are done, I want to have a little bit of fun with a craft project. Now, this is a great way to add a decorative feature to your garden. And it uses this plant right here, the Tillandsia, or air plant. If you have a look at it, it looks a bit wispy and delicate, doesn't it? But it's a really undemanding plant. So first up, I'm going to make a little plant hanger using a teapot coaster like this, which you can pick up at any craft shop. And on the back, I'm going to roughly mark out the centre. I'm going to dress it up with a little bit of spray paint. Now, of course, you could use any colour, but I'm going flat black. OK, 
Okay, so now that that paint is dry, I'm just going to feed some faux leather strap through a couple of times, and that's going to help secure our plant. Just insert the plant before you tie off that leather at the back. Isn't that a simple, stylish way to turn a low-maintenance plant into a living work of art? And here's another cute idea, using a craft ring. Get your hands on a bit of wire and a small funnel like this. And I'm going to wrap it to form this unique shape, which will be like the vessel for our plant. Now just wrap the straight end of the wire around the top of the ring, tighten it with pliers and snip off any excess. So now I'm just adding a final decorative touch with a few beads. A little Tillandsia. <laughs> I think I know the perfect place to hang this. Now, how super cute do these little guys look? They really are unusual plants. So they don't need any soil, hence the name air plants. They don't even need a lot of water. So just a simple mist from time to time over the leaves will do the trick. And they'll grow on almost anything. So garden job's done for today. I better get stuck into that next list.